Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi Stats tutorial video. So this is going into my big Jamovi tutorial video because, our playlist, because it is a follow-up on the video that you see on your screen right now from about a year ago. So this is um, the Jamovi 1.8, 2.0 series that I uh, have sort of renamed and added along onto. Um, but you can see here that we did uh, the JJ Stats plot add-on module, right? And, and you can see in the video here that I'm going through it. Um, and so we'll jump into it. Now, this was episode 41, and it was put up about a year ago, September 28th, 2021. So it's been more than a year since I put this video on and 330 views. And it was sort of a good overview of what the video was all, uh, what the module was all about. But as you can see that I, I did put that it was bugged and it was bugged. And um, it's got, sort of gotten broken down into you know, a few things. Um, the OMV file that came with it to start was a great way to show you what the it looked like. But if I advance up here um, to this, uh, you can see that I'm changing things to integers just to see if I could get the histogram working. And um, so I went to the histogram, as you can see here, and I put len in there and I got this specified decimal P not being exported to name namespace, whatever. And so it was bugged. You could, couldn't use my own data to use the JJ stats plot, which is really great because look at all of the uh, things that you can do. So in this video, we are going to explore the changes that they made because Sadar Balchi, Sardar Balchi, um, said that a year, about a year ago, that they were updating it all. And that's perfect because let's go into that right now. So here I am in Jamovi, and let me make the, let me embiggen this. Okay, um, I am running uh, version two point three point one nine. Now this is not the most updated version, but there was only a few bug fixes in point two one. So I decided I'll wait for the next big release to update my Jamovi. So I am running two point three point one nine, but I did update my JJ stats plot. So let me and and for those of you who are watching at home, I am uh, op I've opened the Big Five Dolan at all two thousand nine. You can grab that from the data library down here, all the way at the bottom because of all these of all these data sets uh, loaded in. So. If you want to follow along with me as I go through JJ Stats Plot, um, that would be amazing. So here is JJ Stats Plot. It's getting a little um, clipped in here as far as the text uh, with the behavior change module. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And so it's gonna grab all of these. Uh, it's gonna grab all of these things. But of course, what was bugged, which is what I couldn't show you in the original video, was the doing plots with your own data as opposed to the plots that they already had made in the OMV file. So let's go ahead and see all the changes, you know, the, the, the under the hood changes that they made to fix all those bugs so we can use this JJ stats plot. I'm so happy it's been updated and uh, apologies to those of you who are waiting on uh, a video from more than a year ago on that bugged. I, I, I said I was going to make a new video. I'm like, I can't wait. And in my comment to Sirdar and it, it just never eventuated. And so here we are while I'm on break for the holidays and let's just jump into it. So again, I have the Dolan et al. Big Five data open. So I'm going to do a histogram and then I'm going to go through the scatter and correlation matrix because I can do that with this. Now, bar charts and pie charts are going to be a little goofy with this data. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I will do, um, I will open up some data to do a dot chart and a box violin plot to show you um, categorical versus continuous. But let's do, let's do these three to start this video. Let's just a histogram. Let's do a histogram and let's do a, a neuroticism histogram. Okay. And here we go. I just put it over and voila. I get the the I get the histogram and this is fantastic because in the previous video this didn't work at all. The only histograms that I could show you were histograms that were already created by the devs when they created the module. Now I can put our own data Now we can put our own data in here and use all of the amazing features of this robust module in Jamovi. It's a great module uh, to mess around with to put in your data so you can make lovely looking charts. So let's go through this. I know I scrolled down. All right, so I put neuroticism in my variables and it already makes the histogram based on a number of default features. So let's go through these default features and then let's go through and change some of these axes and um, uh, things that, uh, labels and all of those things, kinds of things. All right, so we've made a histogram. The histogram is showing us um, a t-test. So students t, 499, uh, that's how many uh, data points I have, n minus one, so I have 500 data points in this, uh, gives me a t of 139.63. And this of course is a very, 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 very large t. Okay, so hedges G is 6.24. That's a large effect. And we have a 95% confidence interval as um, 5.84, 6.64. Look at that. And um, our observation N is 5. I'm not entirely sure what that means there. Um, and then down here we have the log information. I don't know if I would actually include this stuff, but this is just showing me the mean. OK, so the mean is 2.83 on the scale from one to five. And so we have on the left side of the y axis, we have the solid count, how many people represent values on our x axis. And then we have the proportion of the total on the second y axis. So these are two different y axes. OK, so it tells you that at about 50, a count of 50 
is representative of 10%. And that makes sense, right? 50 is 10% of 500. So there you go. So it tells you just where, you know, our mean and mode, because this is also our highest number here, 2.83 lives in this bin, right? So whatever the, the width of this bin is, we have our information. All right, so let's go through these options. So we are either going to exclude or include missing data. We don't need to worry about that. By default, exclude missing data is the appropriate option. You can ex you can uncheck that if you really wanted to. In this particular one, it's not going to matter. Um, now, uh, the type of statistic that we have is either parametric, robust, or Bayes. I think for the vast majority of my users, it's going to be either parametric or Bayes, depending on where you're coming from in this life. Um, by default, it's parametric because that's the vast majority of the data that we look at, continuous data. Okay, and The measure, we can do mean, median, and mode, and that'll tell us up here. So if I change this to median, it will change what our mode is, or it'll show what our mode is, although I don't think it did. It should tell us what our mode is, or our median is, excuse me, or we can do none. Although that didn't change anything there. So I'm not entirely sure where that is supposed to change. Okay. So that doesn't work. Oh, that's a bit too bad. We'll see what happens. So in the plot, we can get rid of our statistical, we can have our statistical results or we can get rid of it. Um, so that's statistical results, both uh, from the log likelihood and from our students T, or we can get rid of it and have a nice clean thing. We can add our normal curve on here. Okay, I think this is a great addition to any histogram because it shows not only the curve itself, but underneath the density. Okay, you can add the test value in here, although the test value does not seem to change anything. Okay, and we can change our bin width. Now, this is really important. So we can do by default, which is what the computer thinks is great, or we can do something different. So by default, it says is the max number of X divided by the min number of X divided by the square root of N. So the max of X divided by the min. Okay, so we have, you know, five divided by one, I suppose, um, because well, those are the max and the min, right? Divided by the square root of 500, and that gives us the bin. But we can also change this to 0.5 and click off, and it will give us smaller bins. We can change this to 0.25, and we can get, oops, that's two decimal points in there, sorry. We can change that, and we'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see the x-axis is getting um, wider and wider, and then our counts are changing on, and our proportions are changing too. So just be aware of that. We can either do by default, which gives us a, sort of a hard x-axis to read, but gives us the bins that make sense for this, okay? Or we can uh, move on. Uh, test value, again, doesn't change anything. Values on bars, we can do counts. We can do density, okay? We can do proportions, or we can do a mix, which doesn't seem to change anything on this graph, okay? But in any case, we can change the value of the X label. So um, neuroticism, ooh, neuro, 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 neuroticism uh, scale value, okay? And that will, supposed to change, that was supposed to change the X axis. Y label, let's change this to a capital count and go with that. Nope, doesn't change it either. Change the title, supergram. Let's see if it changes that. Okay, so still a little bit buggy. Yep, doesn't change my title. Uh, plot caption. Cool beans. Yeah, nothing changed there. Okay, so it's a still a little bit buggy. Still a little bit buggy um, because we none of these changes uh, have been able to be added. And adding in the statistical results doesn't change much either. All right, let's see if the other ones uh, work. So let's go to JJ Stats and let's do a scatter plot. Okay, and let's put in extroversion versus agreeableness, let's say. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. That looks really cool, actually. I love this. This is wonderful. All right, so we've got uh, extroversion agreeableness. We don't need to worry about uh, exclude missing data. Let's take a look at what we're seeing in here. So again, we have the t-test, okay? And we have the log likelihood stuff, okay? We have extroversion down here on the y-axis and we have agreeableness. The problem is, is that our, it's getting truncated. We also have our distributions along the top and the side, okay? So that this is giving you a histogram for my agreeableness variable. And this is the histogram for my extroversion variable. And then this is the scatter plot. And of course, this is giving me a curve line. The gray is the confidence interval between the two. Okay, uh, and so let's go through the analysis. So again, we have parametric, non-parametric. If we change that, it's not really going to change anything because non-parametric and parametric are going to be uh, the same in both cases because uh, of the uh, type of data it is. What it's going to change is the calcs up here at the top, right? And as opposed to Pearson, it's going to give me Spearman. But of course, we want our Pearson, uh, 0.05. And then pairwise comparisons or not, we want to turn those off or on. That doesn't seem to do anything, okay? Pairwise display, uh, let's do everything. No, that didn't change anything. Non-significant, no, that didn't change anything either. Um, An adjustment method, uh, Bonferroni. This will tell us whether or not there's a difference between you know, the, the two. Let's add a GG stats plot layer. Let's, let's, what does this do? GG stats plot layer. It doesn't really do much. Hmm. 
Well, that's a bit of a bummer. I can't make, and there's no changes that I can make here. Huh. Well, I can't make this a straight line either. Although, look, with Pearson being 0.05, there really is no comparison between the two. They're both solidly 3.5. All right. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the scatter plot in JJ Stats plot. Let's do a correlation matrix, shall we? Let's put in all of them, all five. Okay. Here's the correlation matrix, and it tells us what is good by colors. So here we have a sample size of 500. Correlation Pearson, a dark shade of green is going to be one. And as you get closer to negative one, it's going to become a darker shade of orange. And so green is positive, orange is negative, white is zero. Okay, so in our in our uh, options here, we can do, again, parametric, non-parametric, robust, and Bayes. So if we change this from parametric to non-parametric, we are going to get Spearman correlations as opposed to Pearson correlations. Pairwise comparisons, we can show significant or non-significant. Okay. Um, adjustment method, Pont Bonferroni, and we can add a GG stats plot layer. Look at that. We can do a box violin, a violin, um, and it's not adding it, okay, or a box box chart. Uh, hasn't changed uh, at all. You can see where the X means non-significant at P is 0.05. There is no adjustment actually being done for these, but here we have our significant par comparisons at 0.05. Uh, we can add the GG stop that stats plot layer, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't know if I'm missing something or not. Hmm. So it's still a wee bit bugged. Um, I can't use this for box violence. This function uses ggplot2 and ggstatsplot packages. Please cite Jamovi in the packages as given below. Hmm, let's see if I open this, what happens? Yeah, okay. This is actually opening the ggstatsplot language from GitHub. Okay. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how this would work then in Jamovi if that is the case, if it relies on these layers, right? Hmm. I think I'm going to end this video here because I don't know if anything is going to come of doing further JJ stats, uh, either box violin, dot charts, bar charts, or pie charts. I don't, any, I don't know if there's anything to add. So I think this is a little bit bugged still. Maybe not bugged, but some of the options don't work or don't show changes as one might expect uh, based on the options that are being shown. Like, uh, for example, if we go back to the histogram, um, you know, the mean or median not sh or not getting removed is a bit of a problem, I think, right? I would imagine that if I want none here, I shouldn't have this bar at the top. All right, well, still bugged, I think. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave those down below. Uh, until the next video, thanks for watching. Bye.